We're good. All right, here we go. And action. I'm Mary McDonald Lewis, and I'm the series dialect coach for Leverage. Once you get out, try to stay off in a. My job is to receive the scripts from Dean and the writers, pour over them, see what they've given us in terms of accent, dialect, or language, and we have a lot of foreign languages in the storylines as well, and then um, help the actors bring them to life. And I do that using a number of different resources. The Empire State, the Empire State, that's it, that's where you want to go. There, I think that, that's it, that's where you want to go. This is Leverage 405, the Van Gogh job, and I'm so excited to be working on it because it's set in World War II as well as present day, and so we have a couple of different challenges. We have Danny Glover in present day, and he's telling a story which takes place in the past, and that's played by Aldous Hodge. And so Aldous's job was to pull that Danny Glover sound, to not be Aldous and to not be Hardison, but to be the Danny Glover character. So that's what we've been working on for Aldous as well. He speaks the French language in this episode, so we've been working on that. And I think, hang on, let me get my side. Particular, privé, still not sure we can do either one. But I think that since we went with this, this is what we should do. I feel, I feel strongly that we're really solid with this. Cool. Okay? Good to go. Excellent. I'm excited. And action. The last boat left an hour ago. You'll have to take the bridge. The dernier ferry a partir de plus d'une Il vous faut passer par le pont. Oh, for Pete's sake. I have a private tutor, but you speak better French than I do. I just have an ear for languages. Maybe the most fun that we've been having is I've been working with Beth Riesgraf on creating a mid-Atlantic sound, a period sound, which is now gone from American vernacular. But the sound, when you use that mid-Atlantic sound, just that slight change places it in a particular period or time. And that's what Beth has been working on, so it's been a blast. My father will do whatever it takes to find us and bring me back here. He'll hurt you. I can't let that happen. I can take care of myself. I know you can, but I can't. I've never been to France, Charlie. This town, this place, it's my home. And really, that's the great thing about Leverage. They're so committed to language and dialect and, and certainly the richness of storyline. And they support it in the actors, uh, allowing me to support the actors in ways that you really don't see on many other series. And I think it shows. One of the things that I especially appreciate about Leverage is the willingness that the leads bring to the work on the dialect, accent, and language side. You have Tim, he's got such a line load, and he's carrying the burden of being primary lead in the show, and yet any time he has something put before him, he goes for it with gusto. The finale of season three, where we had Tim speaking Italian to Elisabetta Canales, and Elisabetta really approving and liking what he did, which was wonderful. Io pensavo fossimo amici. Don't you know? I don't have any friends. One of the first times that I worked with Christian, who plays Elliot on the show, he had to speak Arabic. He had to speak it to a child. And so when he took it on, he, he really pulled it inside. And as he spoke to the child, it was so dear and so caring and so accurate, which excited me no end. Ruhi we are us. Gina, as you know, is British, and she's forever getting all kinds of American accents thrown at her. This is the day you became a United States Senator. I'm Viola, Viola D'Agostino. I'm gonna send you a box load of crawlers. Maybe someone took a pop at the Pope. Manana, no, this is Spanish. <laughs> what accent is that? Ooh. She loves the work. She puts in long, extra hours. Um, Beth brings a sunniness and a delight and an eagerness to the work, and Aldis just drills down and focuses. Oh. Now you said you call Kajik if we ask nicely. That's just what you're going to do. But when you call, I need you to be scared for your life, and you'll be scared, boy. Each of them has their own unique flavor, 
but they're all committed to it, and that makes my work really special. And then we have episodes where every single person in the show is in dialect. We had a show uh, last year, directed by Mark Roskin, where everything was set in a coal mine coal mine country and in that case my job is to help everybody who's on the show uh, people from one line to guest stars take on that West Virginia dialect. What are the odds of the shady inspectors and uh, men trying to buy my mind showing up here on the same day you think? I'd say not good. They mentioned where they might be going? No. They did ask for a recommendation on a place to eat. I sent them on down to Carver's. These episodes become far more like movies than television shows. I usually have, if I'm lucky, about two weeks ahead of the first shoot day of any particular episode. And it's at that point that I start doing my homework. Sometimes I actually have to learn a new dialect or accent myself, to say nothing of a language, in order then to be able to teach it to um, my talent. And so I need every minute of those two weeks. But sometimes I'm on set and one of the directors will get excited about a moment and he'll throw a dialect at one of the actors. Do it. Do a dialect, any dialect, and then they come to me and we work together very quickly in their trailer or right there on set and we make magic together. I'm really blessed and really fortunate to be working with Leverage. Love the work. And cut.